Hi, my name is Matt Kendricks. I'm the project lead for DSET Router. Today I'll be talking about how to use DSET Router with FreePBX. So let's first look at the problem space. So as you can see here, you have DSET Router uh, in the middle. You have your user agents or your SIP phones to the left. And then to the right, uh, you have a, a set of media servers. So uh, DSIP router can work with Fusion PBX, uh, Asterix FreePBX using Chan SIP, or Asterix FreePBX using PJ SIP. In our situation, we're going to be focused on uh, Asterix using um, PJ SIP. So what you see here is a domain called MacTest.com. Right? This is a makeup domain, made-up domain. It does not exist in DNS. Um, and we've defined that domain inside of DSIP router. And then all the actual user agents will use that domain when registering. Okay. So what happens is that uh, when somebody registers as 999 at MacTest.com, uh, the actual traffic will be routed to DSIP router. DSIP router will then route that traffic to the, the defined media server that's associated with it. So in our configuration, that will be the red box. That will be the asterisk server with FreePBX running PJ SIP. So let's go ahead and get started. Can you kind of can see how this is actually configured and how it works? So I am logged into DSIP router. This is validate. We're still logged in. We are not. So let's go ahead and, and log back in. So uh, if you've looked at any, other, any of the other videos where we actually uh, install DSIP router using the Amazon image, you will know that the actual password for the uh, DSIP router UI will be the instance ID of that particular uh, instance of DSIP router. So let's go ahead and grab that. And now we're, we're logged back in. So now the first thing we're going to do is create a endpoint group. Um, to have our free PBX server. So I'll call it free PBX. Uh, I'm going to create a endpoint here. So, and we're going to give it the IP address of that free PBX server, in this case, domain name. Uh, and that's all we are going to do here. Click save. We're going to add it. And really, all we need to really have here when we go and set up the domain mapping is the PBX ID. So it's 78. So remember 78. Okay. All right. So now, so I'm going to go over to domains. I'm going to click add. I'm going to create MacTest.com. Oops. I'm going to specify the domain type, which is going to be passed through to a PBX, and it's going to be 78. We'll click Add there, and then we're going to do a, a quick reload just to make sure that the configuration has been uploaded to Camellio and properly put into memory. All right, so now. Uh, this, this domain is here. Let's just go back and look at our endpoint group and just make sure we didn't fat finger anything. Yep, endpoint group is 78. And now we are ready, right? So this is our free PBX server here. Uh, you can see free PBX decent router.net. Um, here goes the extension that we have here. The extension we have, so pay, pay attention to this because this is kind of a gotcha, is that it is one two three four five six seven so it is seven digits long is the extension okay so let's go um to our uh zoipier uh here and uh, kind of configure our phone and uh with the configuration so i have a um account called uh webrtc testing don't the, the actual uh, terminal meaning thing, but I'll just change it just to be in compliance. This is this uh, pass through testing. Um, the extension I have is three one one zero zero five, and then the outbound proxy 
is really just the the DSIP router uh, box, right? So it's really the the IP address of DSIP router. So, all right. So now I'm gonna try and register. So, mind you, at this point is where when it has registered, it should be forwarded over to um, the free PBX box. So you can see that uh, both extensions are registered, 31105 and 31106. So let's now try and place a call between them. All right, so let me go to my soft phone again. And uh, you said 31105 is registered. I'm gonna tell 31110006. And uh, let's let's take our terminal here and let's let's run SCM grep. Uh, I'm uh, I'm disconnected, so let's go ahead and uh, get reconnected. And uh, and just do a SCM grep minus C. Oops, let's go this and SCM grep minus C. So hopefully you can see that. I'll make it a little bit bigger for us. There it is. And then now let's let's place a call. All right, it says it's ringing. I don't see. So, so what's happening here let's review what's happening here call comes inbound from our our SIP phone right so we're calling 31106 okay the contact in which I'm coming from is, is 311005 right so so which is 31105 calling 311006 uh, this looks good. Invite is unauthorized. Yes, acknowledge it. Then we send it back with the actual authentication header, and things are good. And then uh, it's it's ringing. If we go over here, what you're seeing is that um, this is the other leg of the call um, going out of the uh, free PBX server, and then it's going into uh, the DSIP router and DSIP router. Uh, this this one seventy two is the internal IP address of the SIP router. Remember, this is sitting on AWS, right? So you have the internal IP address then mapped to a to a a, a external IP address going outbound. So it's, it's not it, and it's sending it to this address here, which is actually one of our carriers. You may be like, well, why isn't it? And I get this question a lot. Why isn't it being sent to uh, the extension? the 311006. Well, I'm gonna show you why it's not working. Um, remember, if you remember, um, this particular, what the, the size of the extensions are seven digits in this case, okay? If we go look at, in the Camellio config, there's something called server it's a configuration parameter called server PBX max local digits. Right now it's set to five. So basically anything uh, over five digits, it thinks is going to the PSTN or AKA the carrier. So let's go ahead and change this. So we have a max of, of uh, eight digits just to be safe. Um, and let's do that. So we can do that and we can actually force the restart the the um uh Camellio to reload itself from the ui or you can uh, restart it uh in this case i'm going to uh restart it well you know what let's 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 actually uh let's reload it here let's be fine i think this should work without a problem i think we should not have an issue with uh, with a restart like this. And let me go back to the screen so you can see what I'm seeing. So once it reloads, we will try the call again. And then we should see it actually hitting um, 
the actual soft foam. So let's go ahead uh, and bring our soft foam back up. So let's go ahead and make a call. So we got 311-006-006. And we have call. I see it showing up on my on my soft phone here. I'm gonna answer. Testing, testing, testing. Uh, looks good. I'm gonna hang up on it. And the actual call ends as well. So very good. So the key thing here is that you you have to remember that the um, the actual variable that we showed uh, basically it's the max digits for an extension within decent router needs to be changed if you have more than five digits. Um, that is one of the major things that we get asked about a lot. But hopefully you found this video very useful, especially for those who are, are leveraging free PBX and asterisks. So we'll talk to you soon. Have a great one.